All right, this video is on the introduction to geometry. So let's start with naming lines, rays, segments, and angles, because this is the beginning of what this chapter is going to be all about. So the first one we'll start with is AB. AB is a line segment. The reason why I know it's a line segment is because it has two endpoints. So this is an endpoint, and this is an endpoint, okay? They're called endpoints because you notice they are points, um, and there's nothing that goes past them, okay? So I could call this either AB or BA. It doesn't matter which order you go in. Okay. And the way you show that's a line segment is you draw a little bit of a line up there without any arrows or anything like that. Okay, so that's how you would name line segment AB. Okay, and like I said, a segment has two endpoints. So this is a segment. Line segment. All right, our next one over here is CD. So this one, it has a segment within it, right? CD right there. If you go from there to there, that is a segment, which we can call DC here. CD, okay, so you could talk about that segment, but the whole thing is a ray. So the reason I know the whole thing is a ray is because it has a point right here at C, and then it goes through D and it goes on forever, right? They would usually show that with a little arrow, if you will, okay? And so this is called a ray, kind of like a ray of sun, which starts at the sun and then it goes on forever as far as it can reach the light, okay? And the way you name a ray is important, okay? Because like the segment where it was A, B, B, A, and you could switch the order, this you can't switch the order. The order matters. So the first letter has to be the point that's the beginning end point, and then the second letter is where the ray is heading towards, and that's the little symbol. So you would name this ray C, D, okay? You couldn't name it D, C because it doesn't start at D and go towards C. It starts at C and goes towards D, okay? So that's ray C, D. So the next one here is obviously an angle, okay, so here's our angle, and you name angles with three letters, okay, because an angle, <coughs> you notice, is two segments that meet at a common vertex, so H down here is called the vertex, or the corner, if you will, of our angle, so it's two line segments, GH and IH, that meet at H and form an angle, a vertex, so we name our angle, we have a little angle symbol, and it goes to the beginning, it doesn't go on top of it this time. And you either name it going this way, G H I. So we've got G H I. Or I could have gone the other way, I H G. Okay, so I H G would also be okay. You notice in both examples, the letter in the middle is the H, the vertex, okay? So no matter what, that vertex needs to be in the middle to show it's the middle point of my angle, okay? And angles can go on forever, too. They could have little arrows here. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's an angle. And you name it with three letters. Our last one on here is a line. So you notice a line goes on forever in both directions. A lot of times we'll have little arrows to show that. Okay, so again, since we're naming a line, which is closely related to a segment array, you're going to use two letters, okay, not three like our angle. And you can use any two letters that are on the line. For example, EF, or I could say FE. If I had other dots on here, if I had, let's say, a W here, you can name it EW, you can name it WE, okay? Any of these are fine. And the symbol for a line is just a little picture of a line with those arrows on top, okay? Now, notice on the segment, we didn't need to put the little dots. I mean, you could if you really wanted to. The reason you don't put the dots is they can kind of start looking like arrows when you're drawing really small. Um, but notice, within our line, I mean, there are segments. If I look right here, EW is also a segment if I start from here to here. When we mean the line, we mean the whole thing that keeps going on forever and ever and ever and ever in both directions, okay? But within a line, there's little segments. There are rays, right? There are rays coming off from either side of the line. But if we were going to talk about the entire thing, the best description for it is a line because it goes on forever in both directions, okay? So remember, segments, rays, and lines, you use two letters, and the symbol goes on top of those two letters. Angles need three letters, and they have a little angle symbol in the front. The one exception for angles is sometimes, for example, this one, you could name it just by its vertex, so you might see just angle H, okay? But you'll never see an angle that's named by two letters. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't clarify where the angle is, okay? So you'll either more specifically name it with three letters, occasionally you'll see it with just one, okay? So that's naming. All right, classifying. So we got some angles here, okay? So my first angle I'm going to look at is BCD. 
So since you know how to name angles, you'll see that BCD is up here in the top left. And we have a measurement for it. You see right here? You see how it says M angle BCD? So that means the measurement of angle BCD equals 110.28 degrees. Okay? So that would make this angle what we call obtuse. Obtuse is anything over 90 degrees. So if the angle measures over 90 degrees, and remember degrees is our unit for measuring our angles, okay? If it measures over 90 degrees, it's obtuse. So since this is 110.28, that is obtuse. Our next angle we'll look at is EGF, which you see is 41.79. So that is what we call acute. Acute is anything under 90 degrees, okay? Under 90 degrees, it's acute. Our next one, this angle, is 180 degrees. Now, you may notice this looks a lot like a segment. It is. It's called a straight angle, like a straight line, a straight segment. So a straight angle, and it has to measure exactly 180 degrees. So if it's a straight line, straight angle, it's 180 degrees. And then this angle measures 90 degrees, and this would be called a right angle. And right angles have to measure exactly 90 degrees, okay? And often on right angles, they'll tell you they're 90 degrees, but they'll put this little box instead inside there. Instead of doing a little curved angle marker, they'll do a box one, okay? So those are our four types of angles that we will work with. Obtuse, over 90, acute, under, straight 180, and right is exactly 90. So that's classifying angles. All right, different types of lines. So we got parallel lines, intersecting lines, and perpendicular lines, okay? So you could have parallel lines where two lines don't ever meet, okay? So they're never going to cross. So two lines that never intersect. And notice that they are constantly the same distance from each other. Okay, these are two line segments, but could also be lines, having them go on forever, both directions, right? And the way they'll often show you, so that you know for sure that lines are parallel, is they'll put these little arrows on them. You see that, okay, midway through the line, not at the end, but midway through it. They're telling you that those lines are parallel, okay? All right, intersecting lines are just two lines that meet or cross. So two lines that meet or cross. Nothing special about it, just they hit each other, okay? So you notice this, these two line segments are meeting right there. That's where they meet. And they just keep, continue on their merry way. Don't bother each other anymore. Okay, so intersecting lines. And it's impossible for lines to intersect more than once because lines are straight by definition. So they can't curve back around and hit again. So they're just going to intersect once. So perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect. So again, they're like the intersecting lines. You see here that they hit each other. They meet. But they intersect at a right angle, okay? And so remember, a right angle, we just learned about that, is 90 degrees, okay? So this measurement right here is 90 degrees. And often, like I said, they'll show a little square there so that you meet it, know what meets at a right angle. It's a 90 degree angle, okay? And it can just meet like this. It can intersect or it keeps going through. That's fine. But you'll know that every angle around this intersection is all 90 degrees if they're perpendicular. Okay, so we got parallel, they never meet, they never intersect. Intersecting just means they meet or they're cross, uh, meet or cross. And perpendicular means they intersect, they meet, but they meet specifically at a right angle. Okay, so perpendicular is more specific to intersecting, okay? So these two are in the same category, parallel is its own thing, right? Perpendicular is more specific type of intersecting. All right, so that's types of lines. All right, polygons. So, which of these are polygons? So what would be important to know maybe is what is a polygon? So you got all sorts of things here. All right, I'll tell you right now, this is not a polygon. The reason it's not a polygon is its sides are curved. You don't want curved. So if that's not a polygon, then that means this also isn't. Again, it's curved, so no curved. Same with this one, curved, no. And then this one, look, it's not even, it's like an angle, it's not even, a proper shape, so it's not closed, okay? So open shape, not good, okay? 
All my other ones are polygons, okay? So the definition of a polygon, let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. So our definition of a polygon, our requirements are for a polygon, and it has to have straight sides. Okay, it has to be closed, so that means all the sides have to connect. Okay, so the only way you can have straight sides closed and connect is if you have at least three sides, and we'll show an example of that in a second. Okay, so straight sides, they're closed, okay, um, and they can't crisscross, they can't cross over each other, they can't intersect, okay. So, no crossing sides. <coughs> so like I said, the smallest um, type of polygon would have three sides, right? Because like we showed on the other page, if it only has two sides, it's only an angle, and it's not going to close, okay? So you need that third side. As you see with that third side, that becomes a triangle. So a three-sided polygon is a triangle, okay? There's obviously specific types of triangle, but the general name for a three-sided polygon is a triangle. Next is four sides. If you have four sides, you would call it a quadrilateral or a quadrangle. So quadrilateral or quadrangle. So obviously quad means four. Lateral means four sides. And wrangle or angle really <laughs> uh, means angles, obviously. So you could either be describing it has four sides or has four angles, which obviously has both. So that's why both those words work. All right, and then we get into polygon, that whole gon. So we have pentagon for five. So penta means five. Then we have hexagon for six. Seven is heptagon. Eight, so this one's an easy one to remember. Like an octopus, octagon. Nine is nonagon. And ten is decagon. Okay. It keeps going. There's other names for a little while. Eventually, you get to a point where, like, if it has 57 sides, they just call it a 57-agon. So they get so big that the, they don't have prefixes for them anymore. They just kind of call them that number agon. Um, so it kind of is just a pattern like that, okay? But these are the ones you need to, get, need to know. Triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, octagon, nonagon, decagon, okay? So remember, a polygon, straight sides, closed, no crossing sides. So that means a circle, not a polygon. The sides aren't straight, okay? All right, so our last thing we're going to talk about is regular versus irregular polygons. We know what polygons are, but what makes it regular versus irregular, okay? So regular polygon means all the sides and all the angles are what's called congruent, okay? So all sides and all angles congruent. Now congruent is just a fancy word for equal. So make sure you write this down. So it's our geometry word for equal. It means every part of them is the same, okay? And it has a symbol. It's an equal symbol, but it has a funky little wave on top, okay? So be sure to put this in your notes, in your vocabulary notes, okay? So if I'm looking at these, I first see a triangle, right? See this triangle over here? It's red. Is that regular? The sides look like they might be close to the same, although this one right here looks a little bit longer. But the angles aren't quite the same. Okay, so this is not a regular polygon, okay? Um, it's not all exactly the same. But then this quadrilateral up here, this four-sided shape, the blue shape, that would be a square. All its sides are the same. This side, this side, this side, and this side are all the same. Look, they're all the same measurement. And those little tick marks are a way to mark that they're all the same. And all these angles are right angles. They're all 90 degrees. So this is a regular quadrilateral, a.k.a. a square. Okay, so a square is a regular polygon, a regular quadrilateral. Over here, our orange shape, it has six sides, which makes it a hexagon. And notice all six sides are the exact same length. So I'm going to put little tick marks because they're all the same. And all the angles are the same. So this is regular, okay? Most of those bigger polygons you're used to seeing, hexagon, heptagon, decagon, all those, you usually see them as regular shapes. They usually show them like this, regular. They don't usually show them like this pink one, which would be irregular. It has one, two, three, four, five sides. Makes it a pentagon. 
but not a regular pentagon. 